After the release of Double Dragon, arcade developers were scrambling over themselves to make two-player co-op beat-em-ups, and with good reason. Double Dragon had been a massive commercial success, and technos were hailed as geniuses in this genre, and so they should be. They found a smart way to con gamers out of their cash to play a rubbish game. So if someone could make a better beat-em-up, they would be sure to clean house. Data East produced this game, Dragon Ninja, or to give it its full title, Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja, obviously trying to appeal to young kids at the time, and righteous dudes of the era. <laughs> Unlike Double Dragon, Dragon Ninja is played across a single plane, something Data East seemed to stick to for years. When you look at other Data East games of the era, Sly Spy, Midnight Resistance and Robocop, all of these games followed the single plane format. This meant the action was going to be more limited in what was possible. So the majority of enemies in each level are dispatched with one or two hits. Which makes you wonder, why do the bad dudes have combos with repeated hit connections? The game is set in a fictional Washington DC where President Ronnie has been kidnapped. President Ronnie being a play on the US President of the time, Ronald Reagan. So the President has been kidnapped by the evil Dragon Ninja, and it's up to the bad dudes to stop him and save the President. Well, I guess it's different from the kidnapped girlfriend plot. The action takes place over several levels, and all of them are pretty drab in their appearance, with small sprites, flat backgrounds, and repetitive enemies throughout the entire game. Certain references to other Data East games appear, like the billboards for Karnov, and this end of level guy looks a lot like Karnov as well. <laughs> sound is pretty good, the music is nothing to dance to, the end of level boss tune I think got pinched by Sega in their Mega Drive game Spider-Man vs the Kingpin. The sound effects of the hits are pretty beefy and quite a fair amount of speech can be heard as well, something that was becoming more common in games but still pretty rare. And actually, the speech in this game is pretty clear if I am being honest. And overall, I thought the sound was fairly polished. The gameplay is fairly linear and basic, which is what you would expect from a single plane beat-em-up, but it's still a pretty enjoyable game to play. I do remember playing this on more than a few occasions in the arcade with a mate, and not being very good at it, as was the case with my game playing ability in those days. But I stuck with it a few times. I never completed it or anything, but I felt it was a decent game to get on the Commodore 64. If it ever came out.
by this stage in a Commodore 64's life, I shouldn't have expected much. But I did have high hopes for Dragon Ninja, as the arcade game was pretty simple, it should have been easy to pull off a decent port. As soon as you start to play the game, the disappointment flows over you from head to toe, as this game on the Commodore 64 is rubbish. First off, the controls are utter garbage. When you press fire to attack, the computer just decides when it's going to execute that command. It would seem as if you have absolutely no control over it at all. The visuals are not bad. I mean, you can kind of recognise them from the arcade. If you squint your eyes, they look really good. But overall, they are a massive step down from the arcade. The famous Sid Chip done its best at producing a tune, but the tune fails miserably, and the sound is pretty awful. But then, it's an 8-bit micro, and this was pretty much par for the course for them in those days. When the bad dude hits an enemy, it sounds like someone kicking one of those cheap footballs you would always find in bargain basement buckets. You know the ones that cost a quid, and would blow away when kicked into the air. In fact, it might even have been sampled from that. Even if this game had amazing visuals and sound, the awful horrendous controls let the game down horribly. And when I got the game, I was beginning to wonder why I had bothered. I remember CVG giving it a pretty decent rating just because Double Dragon on a Commodore 64 was so bad. That's no reason to give a game a decent score. So because of a lack of competition, it got a good score. How did magazines get away with that at the time? My head had been beginning to turn towards the Sega Master System, and games like this just turned it round even further. It was so obvious that the once mighty Commodore 64 was now just a has-been and was struggling to keep up with the big boys. Anyway, that was my look back at Dragon Ninja. If you like this video, then please do give me a sub and a thumbs up or maybe even a comment or two below about your memories of Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja. And that's all from me folks, thanks for watching.